everybody, welcome to Seriously Read a Book. My name is John, and today we're going to be reading Junie B. Jones and the Mushy Gushy Valentine by Barbara Park, illustrated by Denise Brunkus. Here we go, you ready for some more Junie B. fun? Chapter one, party ideas. My name is Junie B. Jones. The B stands for Beatrice, except I don't like Beatrice. I just like B, and that's all. I go to school in room nine. Room 9 is where they have afternoon kindergarten. They also have morning kindergarten, only I am not familiar with that arrangement. Today at school, my teacher had an announcement to make. A announcement is the school word for listen to me and I mean it. My teacher's name is Mrs. She has another name too, but I just like Mrs. and that's all. Mrs. told us that we are going to have a special day in room 9 and it is called Valentine's Day. She said that Valentine's are special cards about friendship, and all of us in room 9 are going to give them to each other. My bestest friend Lucille squealed real loud, real happy. Ooh, I love getting cards, teacher, she said. I especially love getting the kind with money in them. Money is my favorite kind of mail. Me too, Lucille, I said. Money is my favorite kind of mail, too. Plus, also, I enjoy the publisher's clearinghouse sweepstakes. Mrs. did a chuckle. Well, I'm sorry, girls, but I'm afraid there won't be money in our valentines, she said. In room nine, we'll just be sending happy wishes to each other, but it will still be lots of fun, she smiled. We'll be making a special Valentine's box to hold all the cards, and on the day of our party, I will personally deliver the cards to each one of you, she explained. Just then, I jumped right out of my chair, because nobody even mentioned a party before. Hooray! I yelled, hooray for parties! Can we have cake and donuts, Mrs.? And what about cheese, popcorn, and cotton candy, and pretzels, and candy apples? I thought some more. Plus, also, we'll need red licorice and peanut butter cups probably, and chocolate-covered raisins, oh yeah, and malted milk balls, <gasps> and gummy bears. I looked over at her. Maybe you should be writing this down, I said. Mrs. shook her head no. She said we would have cupcakes, punch, and candy hearts. I sat back down very disappointed. Because not much thought went into the menu, that's why. Lucille stood up. What kind of punch, teacher? She asked. Will it have fresh raspberries and strawberries floating in it? My Nana's caterer always puts fresh raspberries and strawberries into our punch, and it is delicious. After that, Lucille twirled around in her fluffy dress. And what about dancing? I am learning ballroom dancing at my expensive dancing school, and so I would be happy to teach the children who are cheaper than me. Mrs. stared at Lucille a real long time. How very generous of you, she said finally. But I don't think we'll be having ballroom dancing, Lucille. Jamal Hall waved his hand in the air. Then what about a puppet show, he asked. If we can't have dancing, can we have a puppet show? Yes, said a girl named Linny. Or else maybe we could hire a magician. Or what about a wild animal act, asked a boy named Roger, like a grizzly bear or a sea lion. Just then, a boy named Polly Allen Puffer ran right to the front of the room, and he jumped up and down all over the place. No! <laughs> Wait! I've got it! I've got it! He shouted real excited. We could get some of those jugglers who juggle chainsaws. After that, Room 9 clapped and whistled and hooted and hollered. Because who doesn't love chainsaw jugglers? That's what I would like to know. Oh, uh, and here is a picture of Polly Allen Puffer with his arms spread real wide. He's re really wide-eyed and all of everybody's clapping and happy about the idea of chainsaw jugglers. After we finished clapping, we looked at Mrs. Her head was on her desk, and her eyes were staring out the door. Then all of the children in room 9 got very quiet, because Mrs. was scaring us a little bit. Plus also, we were out of party ideas. Chapter 2, Scribble Scraps. The next day, me and my bestest friend named Grace were playing on the playground, and guess what? We saw Mrs. carry a giant box into room 9. It was the box 
we were going to decorate for Valentine's Day, I think. Wowie wow wow, that thing will hold a million bajillion Valentine's cards. I said real thrilled. That Grace did a frown at me. Stop saying Valentine, Junie B. She said, you keep saying Valentine with an M mm sound, and you're supposed to say Valentine with an M mm sound. I did a frown back at her. Who said so? I asked. I said so, said that Grace. Didn't you hear my voice? I just finished telling you it has an N in it. The word is Valentine. -n. I did a huffy breath at that girl. <sighs> you are not a boss of my words, Grace. This is a freed country, and if I want to say Valentine, I can, and I will not even go to jail. That Grace looked annoyed at me. I didn't say you would go to jail, Junie B. She said, I just wish you would say the word correctly. That's all. Yeah, well, we can't always have what we wish for, Grace, I told her. I wish Valentine had an M mm in it, but it doesn't, does it? Hmm. After that, me and that Grace made squinty eyes at each other. Plus, also, we crossed our arms and we tapped our angry feet. Only pretty soon we got tired of that. Because fighting with your friends is not that fun. That's how come both of us hugged each other and we said apology. Sorry, Junie B said Grace. Sorry I tried to be the boss of your words. Sorry, Grace, I said back. Sorry Valentine doesn't have an mm in it. After that, both of us holded hands, and we skipped all the way to room nine. That is called a victory skip. Oh, and look, it's a picture of Junie B and that Grace holding hands and skipping. They're having a great time. They're smiling and <laughs> their hands are up and they're outside during playground time, that's great. And guess what else? After we got to room nine, Mrs. said it was time to decorate the Valentine's box. Everybody sat down in their, quick sat down in their seats. Then we watched Mrs. cover the box with shiny white paper. Plus also, she cut a mail slot in the top. After that, all of the children got our scissors and we cut our paper hearts to paste onto the sides. I cut my fastest. Mrs., look, look. I said, I am already done cutting my heart, and so I have the fastest scissors in room nine, probably. Just then a meanie boy named Jim jumped up from his chair. No, you don't. Look over here. I already cut two hearts. See? One, two. So ha ha on you, he said. I quick cut another heart. Yeah, well, now I have two, two. And so you are not the winner anymore, meanie Jim. Jim held up one more. Three, he yelled. I just cut number three, so I'm still one ahead of you. I made my scissors go speedy fast. Ha! Now I have three, two, so there. I said, Jim did a fast snip. Four! Now I'm up to four, he said. That's how come I got frustration inside me. Stop it, Jim! Stop cutting so fast, and I mean it! After that, I tried to cut one more heart, but my scissors went very out of control, and my heart turned out like scribble scraps. Darn it! Now, look what you made me do! I hollered real mad. All of a sudden, a big hand came flying over the top of my head, and it snatched my scissors right off my fingers. I bended my head way up to see who it was. Who's that look like? Yep, it's Mrs. She has a frown on her face. I did a gulp. <clears throat> I was afraid it was you, I said kind of soft. Then Mrs. went to Jim's table, and she snatched his scissors too. And so me and him had to sit on our chairs for the rest of the, in our chairs for the rest of the day. And we didn't get to decorate the Valentine's box. Because our cutting days were over. That's why. And our pasting days never even got started. Chapter three, picking out Valentine's. The Valentine's box turned out very beautiful. After it was finished, Mrs. passed out lists for us to take home. The lists had the names of all the children in room nine. There are 18 children in our class, said Mrs. So that means that everyone needs to bring 18 Valentines. I raised my hand. Do we bring Valentines for ourselves too? I asked her. Well, no, she said. I mean, there's no rule against it, I suppose, but Valentines are really supposed to be given to others. She thought for a second. Oops. <laughs> I guess that means I made a mistake, doesn't it? She said, since you won't be bringing in cards for yourselves, you will only need to bring in 17 Valentines. I raised my, I raised up my hand again. Yeah, only what if we also want to bring a Valentine for you, Mrs. 
I asked. Mrs. raised up her eyebrows. Well, then you would be back up to 18 again, wouldn't you? She said, 17 plus 1 equals 18. I tapped on my chin. Yeah, only what if there's people in here who we don't actually like very much? Do we have to bring them a Valentine to? Yes, Juni B, she said. Of course you do. Valentine's Day is a day of friendship for everyone. So every single boy and girl in room nine will bring a card for every other boy and girl. After Mrs. finished explaining, she sat back down at her desk. I zoomed up there and whispered in her ear, Yeah, only I know I have to bring cards to the regular boys and girls. I said real soft. But I don't have to bring cards to the big, fat, stinky heads, do I? All of a sudden, Mrs. throwed her arms up into the air. Yes, Judy B, you do, she said. For the last time, you will bring a card for everyone in room nine, even the big, fat, stinky heads. Just then, all of room nine looked at her. Because teachers are not supposed to say big, fat, stinky heads, I think. Here's a picture of Mrs. throwing her hands up in the air in frustration <laughs> and saying the big, fat, stinky heads line. After that, Mrs. closed her eyes for a real long time. Then finally, she stood up very slow and she went to the sink and she took aspirin. <clears throat> the next day was Saturday and it was the funnest Saturday ever because daddy took me to the drugstore and he bought me beautiful heart antennas for my head. Plus also he let me pick out my very own box of Valentines. After we got home, mother helped me pick out the perfect cards for every person in room nine. First, I picked a card for my bestest friend, Lucille. It had a lovely princess on the front of it. This one, mother, I said, I will give Lucille this one. Because when she grows up, she's going to marry an expensive prince. And she's going to let me and Grace sweep her castle. Plus, also, we will get to wear her raggedy used up gowns. Mother looked and looked at me. Lucille is a regular saint, she said very quiet. I know it. I said, me and Grace are lucky to have her. After that, I found the perfect card for Grace, too. And it had two running shoes on the front of it. Mother read me the words. It said, Valentine, you and I make the perfect pair. We do, Mother. Me and that Grace do make the perfect pair. Because Grace can beat me at running, and I can beat Grace at lots of other stuff, probably. Only I haven't actually found anything yet. After that, I picked out special cards for all the other children in room nine. Every time I picked out a Valentine, Mother crossed a name off the list. Finally, there was only one name left. Jim, said Mother. You still need a card for Jim. I did a big sigh. Because I didn't want to give that guy one, of course. I looked all through my box of Valentines. Then all of a sudden, I saw a card with a funny skunk on the front. That one, I said. I will say Jim, that one. Mother shook her head. I don't know, Junie B, she said. A picture of a skunk just doesn't seem very nice. I put it in an envelope. Perfect, I said, because neither is Jim. Chapter four, the disagreement. On Monday, I skipped into room nine very thrilled. Mrs. Mrs. Look, I said, I have all my Valentines for the big giant Valentines box. They are right here in this paper bag I'm carrying. I run and showed her inside it. See them, see them, Mrs. I matched every single card to the exact person who will get it. I explained, Mrs. patted my head. She said the word, good job. Then she took me by my hand and she showed me how to put my Valentines through the mail slot in the box. I do believe that you are the very first person in room nine to bring in her cards, said Mrs. I did a gasp at that exciting news. First, Mrs.? I asked. I am really, really first? After that, I springed way high in the air and I ran around and around in a circle. I've never been first at anything before, I said real squealy. Not ever, ever, ever! 
And so what is my prize for winning? I closed my eyes and held out my hands. Put it right in my hands, okay, missus? I won't even peek, I promise. After that, I stood there real patient, but nothing got put in my hands. Finally, Mrs. Bended down next to my ear. Junie B, honey, I'm really sorry, but there is no prize, she said. We weren't actually having a contest. I opened my eyes. We weren't? Mrs. shook her head no. My shoulders slumped a teeny bit. So then a prize would be out of the question, probably. I said. Mrs. shrugged. I'm afraid I didn't buy any prizes, she said. After that, I rocked back and forth on my feet, and I thought and thought. Would you have a mint in your drawer, maybe? Or some stickers? I asked. Mrs. smiled. Then she took me to her desk, and we looked in her drawer. How about a broken piece of chalk and a yellow rubber band, she asked. Sold! I said. After that, Mrs. told me congratulations, and she gave me my prizes. I quick skipped to my table to show them to Lucille. She wrinkled up her nose. Yuck. Have you been going through the trash can again? She asked. No, silly. These are my prizes, I said. I got prizes for bringing in my Valentine's first. Lucille smoothed her dress. Yes, well... I would have brought my cards in today, too, but they're not back from the printers yet, she told me. What? I said. What printers? The printers, where they print my name on the cards, she said. Wait till you see them, Junie B. Every card will have love and kisses from Lucille on the bottom of it, she hugged herself. They are so beautiful, she said. Each valentine has a cherry lollipop on the front, and the lollipop is in the shape of Cupid, she sighed very dreamy. Cupid is the symbol of Valentine's Day, you know, she said. Of course I know, I said back. Plus also skunks and shoes are symbols of Valentine's Day too, because that's what are on my cards. After that, me and Lucille did our work till recess. Then both of us, went outside to play with our other bestest friend, Grace. Only too bad for us, because Lucille kept on bragging about Valentine's Day, and that's how come she and that Grace got into a disagreement. I am going to have more Valentines than anyone, bragged Lucille. That's because the boys love me better than any other girl, and they will bring me lots and lots of cards. Grace looked curious at her. But Mrs. said to only bring one card for every boy and girl, remember? Not lots and lots. Lucille flounced her flouncy dress. <gasps> Silly Grace, look at me. For goodness sake, I am precious. And when you're precious, boys automatically bring you lots, bring you lots of valentines. They just can't help themselves. She twirled all around. I am the cutest girl in room nine, Grace, she said. I am way cuter than anyone else. She giggled and pointed. <laughs> Even you. After that, Grace did a little frown, because that hurt her feelings, I think. I tapped on Lucille. Yeah, only Grace is the nicest Lucille, I said. And so maybe the boys will bring her lots of Valentines, too. Lucille did a huffy breath at me. But I'm richer than Grace, Junie B. So that is another reason to bring me more. I thought for a minute. Yes, but Grace can run faster. I said, so, said Lucille, my hair is longer and boys like long hair. I looked at Grace's head. But Grace's hair is springier and curlier, I said. And that is cute as a button. Lucille made squinty eyes at me. But I have a big screen TV and a pool. She said real loud. That's how come me and that Grace leaned our heads together. And we got in a huggle. Finally, I looked up at Lucille. Okay, here's what we came up with. Grace can whistle through her teeth, plus she can wiggle her ears, and also she can dribble a basketball through her legs while she's running. Lucille jumped up and down. But I have a pony! She hollered. I patted her, very sympathetic. Sorry, 
I said real soft. Grace has a snake. After that, Lucille's shoulders got very sagging, and she sat down in the grass, because boys love snakes better than anything. Pretty soon, that Grace sat down next to Lucille, and she put her arm around Lucille's shoulders, and she patted her. Because guess what else? Grace is a good sport. And that's the end of part one of Junie B. Jones and the Mushy Gushy Valentine. Um, we will be posting part two soon. If you liked it, please like and subscribe and click the bell for notifications. And I hope you have a great day. Bye.